Jamie, I'm enjoying talking to you about molecular mixology. I understand that uh, with the rose water Ricky, the drink we just did before, um, that it actually focused on a certain aspect of molecular mixology. What exactly was that? Well, for me, the reason why that drink uh, falls under the category of molecular mixology is uh, you're understanding a couple of things. First of all, you're understanding that at a certain um, percentage, alcohol will light on fire. Uh, and two, you're using that uh, fire to heat up and bring out the flavors of other ingredients. So in this case, we took the Angostura bitters, put them through a mister, and used that as a flame to brulee, heat up the cherries, therefore creating, first of all, a lovely smell, and then also to allow some of those flavors of the cherry to change slightly as it, they, they became caramelized and be released with the heat. And plus it's also heating up these spices with the Angostura bitter. In the same way that Indian cooking, you're constantly heating the spices up ahead of time. Absolutely. Okay. Now, what is the drink you have today for us to show? Well, the next drink we're going to do today is going to be called the Vessel 75. It's uh, our signature drink. Uh, not to be confused with the French 75, which is, which is a different drink altogether. Um, and the, the, the reason why this falls under the category of molecular mixology is because we'll be topping um, this drink with a foam. So you're going to be playing into that, that foam angle that quite often takes precedence sometimes, people are focusing too much on the foam. Absolutely. Now are you doing something specific with the foam that actually accents the drink appropriately? Yes. Um, what I'm essentially doing is again playing around with uh, the bringing the old uh, to the new and essentially taking a variation of the old fashioned. Oh, one of my favorite drinks. Exactly. Uh, mine as well. And uh, topping it up with a maple syrup foam. Uh, maple and, and bourbon have always gone well together, so it just makes sense. Okay, let's take a look. Okay, well first we're going to start off with uh, making a foam. Now, people always look at foams and think they're made with cream. Uh, they are not. If they were made with cream, then it would be whipped cream. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> foams are, you're using other uh, proteins other than milk or cream to make the foam. Same sort of texture, uh, but different, um, different textures and different tastes and it mouth feels depending on what protein you're going to use. Um, you can use, as I said before, gelatin, lecithin. We're going to go with something that someone can get in every single grocery store, and that's eggs, egg, egg whites in this case. Um, so we're going to take four egg whites. Good enough. And now we're going to be adding the flavoring to the egg. So when you're figuring out a flavoring, in this case we're doing a maple syrup flavoring, but you could be doing pretty much any sort of flavoring, raspberries or whatever you want, um, depending on the drink that you're going to do. You want to make sure that the flavoring that you're adding to the foam by itself tastes good. So what I always suggest is make say it's a juice, say you're doing a cranberry foam uh, and you're doing cranberry with some lime or, or some, maybe some sugar to make the foam when you add to the egg, make sure that that mixture tastes good first because that's going to incorporate right. into the foam. So if that's unbalanced and doesn't taste good, then your foam's not going to taste good. So to this we're going to add some lemon juice. About how much lemon juice is that? Uh, this one right here is, we're doing two ounces of lemon juice. We're going to do four ounces of maple syrup. And we're going to do six ounces of water, just to lengthen it all and sort of take away some of the sweetness that that maple syrup is going to have. Mm -hmm. Just give it just a, a little stir. Not even really that necessary. Just get it all in together. Now we're going to take a whipped cream canister, which is why a lot of people think that foams are whipped cream. And we're going to pour this mixture into the whipped cream canister. Close the lid, and then add an N2O cartridge to the canister. Now what this does is it just saves you a lot of arm work. What it's essentially doing, the gas is being injected in there and it's whipping it up, whipping it up. And you can do this all by hand if you want to, but it's a lot of work. And if you have the tools, <laughs> use and, them. And I know how much you hate work. So. Thank you. <laughs> it's very true. Now another thing I noticed, a lot of people will take and shoot the, see the comparison between what you're doing here and what you're doing in the soda siphon. The soda siphon uses a CO2 cartridge yes. and this does not use CO2. No, this is N2O. Uh, the difference is the carbon dioxide 
gives you a fatter bubble, um, a lazier bubble. This cartridge will give you a tighter bubble. And if you use this in your water, it will actually make it a little sweet. It has a little sweetness to it as well. So try not to get the two confused. <laughs> They'll both work, but they work better in, in their respective canisters. Yeah. So after you've done this, it usually takes, you know, maybe an hour of chilling for it to work. Sometimes it works right away, but I, I like to chill it. I get a better texture out of it. So, so I put it in the refrigerator or I the freezer? Just stick it in the refrigerator. Don't put it in the freezer. Stick it in the refrigerator, and through the magic of television and a different canister, we have a foam. Okay. Very good. So we have the foam part ready. The next part is the drink part, the fun part. So we are going to start with our twist or variation on an old-fashioned. So let me wash my hands again. We're going to add some cracked ice to our glass. Now the reason why I'm cracking the ice is um, I have a cold draft machine here, and the, the ice cubes are quite large. Yeah, the, the, these are bad examples of them, but the ice cubes are, are quite large. And if I were to throw that in there, first of all, I'm not going to get as much ice as I want. And second of all, they melt really slow, and it's going to take forever for me to get the proper dilution. Mm -hmm. So I, I hand crack it just to make it happen all a little bit faster. And you're using the back of the bar spoon for it's doing using the back of a bar spoon. You don't need a special tool. Except you've got a pretty solid bar spoon there. The yes. standard American ones that are kind of flimsy might actually bend if you're trying to crack the ice like that. It's all about your tools. Yeah. Always buy the best tools that you can possibly get. So we filled our glass full of ice. We're going to take our house bourbon and add three ounces to the ice. Healthy dose of Patience bitters. And we're going to stir that around. Letting it chill and mix. Take our standard rocks glass. And strain. Now, the one way that this differs from an old fashioned is there's no sugar and it's different bitters. Mm -hmm. um, the sugar is being added via the foam. Mm -hmm. So that's why we didn't put sugar into it. Um, and the foam will add a, just a lovely mouthfeel. And take, that's a lot of bourbon, as you saw, and straight bourbon, and this will take off a, a bit of the burn of the bourbon. So we're gonna top this up with our lovely maple syrup foam. And garnish with orange. And just make it a little fancier by stamping out a little. Just using a little cutter a little like this. Yeah, a little like cookie cutter. Stamp out a nice little design. And there we are, the Vessel 75. Thank you.